I'm back. It's springtime here in Indiana, which means most of the bitter cold is over and I can finally make progress on the truck again. So let's take a look at some of the progress that I made uh, over the winter and some of the next projects that are coming up on the truck build. One of the big things that's kept me from making progress on the truck, uh, other than the weather, has actually been uh, delivery of parts that I've ordered. So I ordered uh, some water tanks and a baggage door back in October and it took them like six months to get me the parts. So I finally got the baggage door and got it installed. It is a uh, 30 by 48 inch uh, custom baggage door. Uh, it's really really nice and it seals really well. Um, so it's got a, a locking slam latch and it's got gas struts. So you can see some of the foam insulation from where I put it in. Um, let's go take a look at that from the inside. Here's what the baggage door looks like from the inside. Um, as you can see I just framed it out using um, just standard steel studs um, and then I used flashing tape um, to bridge between the studs and the uh, hole that I cut out of the wall and then just kind of came back in behind that uh, with spray foam to kind of support the um, the flashing tape. So that's worked actually pretty well. I've also managed to get one of the windows installed. Uh, instead of using standard like RV windows, um, which are typically like a single layer acrylic construction, um, which really aren't that great in terms of thermal performance, like insulation value. So what I did is I used a standard house window um, so these are, are glass double pane windows, um, and I believe this one is approximately three feet by a foot and a half is the um, rough opening dimensions. And it's really, really nice. Um, you can kind of open it up. Um, it's got a removable screen, and then uh, all the panes are removable, so if I do need to replace something, um, I can do that. And uh, I've had this in actually probably for two or three months now, and I have zero leaks. Um, once again, I used um, just the standard spray foam stuff uh, coupled with ProFlex RV uh, as the outdoor sealant. I've got a good amount of interior framing done. Um, just like on the doors, these, this is standard kind of metal stud. Uh, style construction so you'll see there's a, a track that I've laid down down here um, and then we have a track up here at the top um, and we just slide the the steel um, studs in there and what I've been doing since I can't get to the back side I'll put some construction adhesive back there and a rivet up here on the front side uh, the same is true for the roof joists um, I've got a piece of track on either side so there's track there um, and the studs just uh, slot into it. And then there are rivets underneath to um, secure everything together. So um, I'm not using a lot of rivets, obviously. Um, the idea here is that this is just to kind of tack everything together. And then I'll come back um, and I'm going to pay somebody to spray foam, uh, insulate everything. And what that'll do is that'll tie the structure together and basically kind of glue everything together um, and make the structure uh, even more rigid than it is right now. One thing you might have noticed in some of these shots are uh, these tubes that are hanging down. And you may be asking yourself, well, what the heck are those for? Well, I'll tell you. Um, these tubes go up to some aluminum heat transfer plates and then they loop back around. And the idea here is that all the ends of these tubes um, down uh, the length of the ceiling will be connected together and will pump uh, coolant, so ethylene glycol and water that's been heated up um, through this tubing and that will be a, a snow melt system. So the roof of this thing is like 13 and a half feet in the air. Um, I can't get up there to clean snow off of it. Um, and so this will make it easy to, to remove snow from the roof. As an added bonus, um, since the roof is aluminum and is kind of a darker color, um, in the summertime, it's very, very likely um, that if I pump water through here, or, or coolant, 
um, I can actually extract heat from the roof and use that to um, heat my uh, hot water heater. So um, that's pretty cool. We'll see how it works. I got the water tanks from the same company I got the baggage door from, so I've been waiting on these uh, about six months, but uh, it was worth the wait. So I have two 100 gallon water tanks. So let's see, there's one water tank, there's a water tank number two, and then I have a 52 or 3 gallon um, gray water tank, um, which will um, hold uh, wastewater from the shower and the sink. Um, there won't be a black water tank because I'm going to go with a composting toilet, um, which will just make everything a lot simpler. This is where the roll-up door used to be. And you'll notice it is not here anymore. This is one of the tasks that I took care of this week. Um, there was originally track all up in here and on this side, so all that got uh, cut, out, cut out using an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Um, and then once again, this is standard metal stud construction techniques. You know, you put uh, track on the floor and on the ground and then put your studs up. Um, the sheet metal, the uh, sheet metal aluminum um, for the back wall that I put up here uh, is actually from Great Dane, which is a, you know, an 18-wheeler trailer manufacturer. Um, so they have uh, catalog parts for like replacement side sheets for trailers. And... Um, I placed an order with them and went to a distribution facility and was able to pick up uh, just these two pieces of, pieces of uh, aluminum sheet and uh, drilled them and riveted them up there. And uh, that was not a, uh, a fun project. So let's go take a look at that from the outside. So, yeah. Since I walled off the back of the truck, the cargo door is the only way in. Whatever, it works. You know, Trump's been making a lot of noise about this wall, but I got it up way quicker than he ever could. So there's what the back wall looks like from the outside. Uh, at first glance, you may notice the inordinate amount of rivets. Um, this is uh, a metric fuck ton, not an imperial fuck ton of rivets. And that took forever. So each of those holes had to be marked out, um, center punched, and then drilled. And then uh, most of these, I actually, once I got the, uh, the sheet metal up, uh, on the side of the truck, uh, I went back and, and re-drilled it and then riveted everything and sealed everything. So uh, this was a very time-consuming and painful project, but it's finally done. So in summary, progress over the winter has been slow but kind of steady. Um, you know, we got some framing done. I uh, got a lot of the parts that I'm going to need to finish up the build. So the next step... Um, you may notice there is no good way to enter the truck right now. Um, so I have a household standard door that I'm going to put on the side of this box. It is fiberglass uh, and it is insulated. So that's going to go right about here. And then I have a little platform that will extend from the side uh, that will have the steps on it um, to enter the truck. So uh, hopefully we'll be installing that in the next week. And uh, I'll update you um, when that happens. So see you next time.